Hi everyone, it's Nicole for Simon Says Stamp and welcome to five ways in five days how to incorporate mica stains into your Christmas card projects. I absolutely love the mica stains and this year's mica stains are no exception. Not only am I going to use the holiday mica stains from Tim Holtz, but we're going to use the Halloween ones as well. There are a few of the colors that really work great with the holiday colors. So here is a look at all 12 colors from the 2022 release. The first way I'm going to share with you, and probably one of the easiest, is an all-over background. With the mica stains, you want to make sure that they are mixed up really well and that none of the mica flakes in the bottom of the spray bottle are left in the bottle and don't get sucked up into the sprayer. So I am double checking the bottom of my bottle quite often to make sure all of those little flakes get, you know, uh, mixed really well. And then I'm going to take and spray with this beautiful winter frost color all over a four and a quarter by five and a half inch panel of smooth white cardstock. Now my favorite way to contain the mist is a plastic box because you can simply wash it out when you're done and let it dry and reuse it over and over. So I have several of these shallow boxes that I find really helpful. Next, I'm going to take one of the Halloween colors, which is called Iron Gate. Now you might notice I didn't completely cover that four and a quarter by five and a half inch panel. And I instead, I just kind of, I covered most of it, but I like a little of the white showing through. And then I used a much lighter hand with the Iron Gate. And I even decided to take another color and add it on top. So this is a little Merry Mist, and it's going to add a little bit lighter. Look at all that beautiful, beautiful, oh, shiny bobble, I'm sorry. And look at the beautiful shine. We're going to go ahead and I'm removing it from the box because the color, um, I don't want it to absorb into the back of the cardstock too much. And I'm gonna set it aside to completely air dry. Next, I'm going to take another box and this time, we are going to stencil with the mica stains. I find with the mica stains, the best results are by using a very light touch or light hand. So you'll notice I am using some layering stencils. These are brand new from the Simon Says Stamp latest release. And I'm going to use a combination of Halloween and Christmas or holiday mica stains, starting with Wicked Elixir. And I used a very light misting, but you can see when I remove my stencil, you still get great detail. So next, I'm going to just take my box out of the way for a minute and go ahead and line up the second stencil. I don't always do this with other inking and stenciling techniques, but I did find it helpful to go ahead and tape my stencil in place so it didn't shift. Next, we're going to spray the second through the second stencil with the beautiful Merry, Merry Mint, I believe. And of course, I can't find it easily. Merry Mint. And I love how Wicked Elixir and Merry Mint look together. Now it is a little splotchy, but I promise the results will be worth it. I'm gonna go ahead and set that stencil aside and tape the third one in place. For this one, I did have to be a little bit more creative simply because I didn't want all of the little berries to get colored with the Wicked Elixir. Now, if you don't mind, you could always go ahead and replace the berries with some pearls or sequins or Nouveau crystal drops, some other type of product. So I spritzed over it with Wicked Elixir and I'm gonna show you that when I remove the stencil, it's really glaring to me that a lot of the greenery is just a little too stark. So I actually washed off my second stencil, or pardon me, third stencil and I well I will come back to it in a minute we're going to add the berries and then I am going to change the color so I'm just going back with low low tack tape and I'm covering up the leaves 
The tape works really great for this as it's not super duper sticky, but it's sticky enough to mask off those areas I don't want the color to get. So this time we're going to take Cocktail Party, which is kind of a pinky red color. Cranberry Tart is super red, and because the other two colors I picked for this stenciling are a little more on the brighter side and not more of the traditional darker color, I thought this would work better. And it really is a beautiful mix of pink and red. So again, mixing, always mixing, always making sure that those mica flakes in each of these is fully incorporated before spritzing. And a super light hand here as well, we definitely don't want our red pink color seeping underneath. Oh my goodness, that looks so, so beautiful. Now I am gonna go back actually with the first stencil. So I misspoke a little earlier. It really doesn't matter which one. And I am going to mix up Merry Mint and I am very, very lightly, I don't wanna cover up the Wicked Elixir. I just wanna add a little additional layering color over that first where there were so many leaves. It almost gives you a third color. And with that, I'm really, really happy with the overall look of my background. Isn't that beautiful? I'm gonna go ahead and set that aside for now. My third and probably my favorite way of adding mica stain to cards is to color your die cuts. I am going to be adding color to the forest greenery border, fruitful berries, and fir branches, all part of the latest Simon Says Stamp release. Now, I have everything laid out in my box because you can control the mist pretty well. I'm starting with fresh balsam, and I consider this more of the traditional greenery color. I went ahead and did the fir branches and the forest greenery border with the fresh balsam color. Next, we are going to take some of the Wicked Elixir and do the fruitful berry branches. The berries I have over there to the side and they're gonna get a nice dose of cocktail party. Now, with all of this, I did decide to take a little Merry Mint and I'm going to lightly, hopefully, and I think I clogged my sprayer, I'm gonna lightly spritz the fruitful berries and also my border and the fir branches. But you can see it's just like some little dabs of color. I kind of like that little bit of distressing. Then for the berries, I am gonna take Cocktail Party and we're going to spray those. Again, a little bit more on the bright colorful side, but you guys know me, I love the bright and colorful. Now, in order to get all of these to dry, you can heat go ahead and heat them with a heat tool, but I like to set all of mine aside, so I'm going to use some nice sharp tip tweezers and I'm gonna pick them up out of the box and lay them out on my mat to completely air dry. The next way to add mica stain is a super useful one and it's splatter. If you love the look of splatter, look at this beautiful Merry Mint on a four and a quarter by five and a half inch panel. I'm not completely covering the background. Instead, I'm just kind of letting it organically be a beautiful splatter. It's another very easy way. If you like a little more controlled splatter, you can always dip a paintbrush in it and just tap or splatter the mica stain onto your project. Just unscrew the top. The fifth and final way that I'm sharing today is to paint die cuts with your mica stains. So again, I did make sure my mica stain was mixed up well, and I'm going to use an old acrylic block from my stash to go ahead and put a little bit with a paintbrush on the acrylic block using it as a paint palette. I have this beautiful embossed and die cut antique lamp, another new product from the latest Simon Says Stamp release. And I'm going to take my paintbrush and paint the color onto the die cuts. This is an amazing way to get that beautiful shimmery shine from the mica stain, but have a lot more precision. This is by far the most detailed and time consuming, I suppose I should say, way to achieve a look with mica stain, but I absolutely love the results. And as you can see, I didn't color super duper precise. I used a nice tiny-ish paintbrush, 
but I'm simply dipping the paintbrush into the color and painting it on. This worked surprisingly easy. This was an idea I had in my head. I had no idea if it would work and it totally did. And now I want to paint everything with the mica stains. You could even mix and match with other paints or other ink colors from the Distress line if you wanted to and simply add that shimmery detail with some mica stain here and there. It wouldn't have to be the entire piece like I'm doing. Now, after I did the greenery, I did, did decide to add more depth and dimension to the images by mixing colors. So I will kind of, or mixing and layering on color. The other thing that I did not do is I did not wash my paintbrush in between. I didn't want any water to be in my paintbrush. I didn't want any water to get into the color as I'm dipping my paintbrush into the mica stain container or spray bottle. And so I simply just wiped it off. And then when I was finished, I washed out my brushes under the tap. This is the Iron Gate color, which truly turned out to be the most amazing color for this Christmas lantern. I'm painting the color on and something I didn't have to be super careful about, which I loved with this particular design is that you can see that there's snow all over this. So it's kind of sitting down in the lantern. It's along the edges of the lantern. It's even along the top of the berries. Well, I did avoid it somewhat, but those are separate dies in this set, meaning that the coordinating die that comes with this embossing folder it die cuts the snow pieces separately. So I'm going to use some Simon Says Stamp white glitter cardstock and die cut all of those and just layer them on top. It helps me not have to be super precise, plus it adds a beautiful finishing touch to this design. So I'm just gonna continue to layer this on and you will see after this is dry, I did go back and layer on like a little winter frost, a little shiny bobble, little things here and there just to add some additional coloring and shading. Very, very light, definitely not over the top. So I believe this is gonna be some fresh balsam that I'm going to then layer onto my leaves. Kind of down the center, and then lightly pulling out over the Wicked Elixir. So just following those embossed lines. I find coloring over embossed backgrounds or images super fun because you kind of have all the detailing there and it's really easy. It's like, you know, the coloring when we did when we were little where it told you exactly what to color and where. For me, it kind of feels like that. And I like that deeper, darker color down the embossed areas. Paint by color is what I was looking for, by the way. I like it in the deeper, darker areas. It just kind of gives the leaves way more dimension. Now, as always with any time I color, I have learned usually to just save reds or pinks to last. And that's just something that works best for me because I tend to make a mess with it. So you will notice that the berries are going to be the last thing that I color, at least in this section, so that I don't accidentally make a, a giant mess of this image. And I'm gonna pick up a little more Iron Gate. I noticed a couple spots I felt like I missed. I wanna get a little closer to that snow the snow will cover that up, but I just kind of want to make sure it's close enough. Now the flame on the candle, Harvest Moon. This is a Halloween color, but it's one of my favorites if you like adding a touch of gold to your cards or projects. What I love is that it does have that gold undertone to it, um, even though it's a beautiful bright yellow. And I use it a lot for splatter on my cards. For the wick, I did go in with Iron Gate, and we will add a little cocktail party actually over the top. You could use Burning Ember, which is kind of an orangey red from the Halloween collection, but because I didn't use it anywhere else on my Christmas samples, I actually ended up just kind of using some of the color left over on my paint palette. For the candle itself, I am going to use Winter Frost, and I am going to do the candle first and the wax 
kind of dripping down. I'm going to mix with some other colors on my palette. It really was just a hodgepodge to lighten it up a bit. So you can see I'm pulling in a little green and how that changes up the color just ever so slightly. Don't be afraid to kind of mix and match. Just don't dip the paintbrush back into your bottle and contamin contaminate it. I would always make sure to wipe it clean first. Now it's time for cocktail party, the little berries. And I am going to try to avoid the snow as much as possible, but if I forget or I cover color and cover it up, remember we have those separate die cuts that we can add over the top. This is a super doable technique and I hope it inspires you to maybe try painting with your mica stains, something that's a little different than the spray and splatter that I've shown you in the rest of the video. Now, once I'm done coloring in this beautiful image, it's time to take all of these amazing mica stain backgrounds and die cuts and parts and pieces and let's make some cards with them. I did end up making only four cards even with these five different techniques and I'm going to share with you how I mixed and matched those techniques to really um, hopefully make the mica stain shine. This is also where I did layer in some of the um, winter frost. I am going to layer on some of the tart cranberry over the cocktail party to deepen and darken the berries just a little bit. Adding in the layering and trying to just make the color a little more rich, a little bit more layered. And you can see how fast that just absorbed into the cardstock. Now, you could use watercolor cardstock. I did use 110 pound weight Nina cardstock for all of the samples today. I find that the heavy weight of the Nina works really, really well. And here's a little bit of either the tart cranberry or cocktail party used with a little additional harvest moon for the flame on the candle. So here is our beautiful background, finished mica piece. Now off camera, I did spray some shiny bobble and winter frost on another eight and a half, eight and a half, how about four, five and a half by four and a quarter panel. And I'm going to emboss it with the embossing folder for the antique lamp. And I did this because you can see with the lamp, you can see through it. And I liked these colors for the background. It was a very simple way just like I created earlier in the video to create that background. Then I did die cut all of the glittery pieces for the snow on my lantern. And I'm going to go ahead and add some little, little bits of glue and layer on all of the glittery pieces. And you're gonna see that it really transforms the lantern into a beautiful layered piece. With the embossing of the background, you could also choose to go ahead and color the entire panel with your mica stains or any other coloring medium for that matter and have it more of a one layered design instead of the layering with the die cut. But I'm really loving all of these embossing folders from Simon Says Stamp that have the coordinating dies with them so that you can layer the pieces on. My suggestion if you want to do the same is you will notice that when I was coloring in the lamp, I did have it already embossed. So I actually die cut the lamp using the coordinating die and then I placed it in the embossing folder and embossed it. I like doing it this way as I find that I get better embossed results. I'm adding all the little snow on the berries using my precision tip tweezers. The snow pieces are pretty tiny and it might be a little fussy, but if you guys know anything about me and die cutting, I am here for all the fussy little pieces. And an embellishment wand works great as well. Then I'm going to put glue on the back of the lamp and glue it in place right there over the mica stain background. So this is a very mica stain heavy design all the way from the background to the layered lamp that goes right on top. Once I have the lamp in place, I am going to go ahead and 
put something heavy on top. My go-to is some acrylic blocks from my stash. And then to finish, I did use a sentiment strip from the latest Simon Says Stamp release and these wonderful snowflakes that come in a new sparkling snowflake frame and trio also part of the new release. I thought that the background needed a little snowflake. These were die cut from white glitter Simon Says Stamp cardstock and then popped in place on the background. The sentiment strip is adhered with foam adhesive to make it pop just a little bit and die cut with a sentiment label die. To finish off, I am going to add these clay snowflakes around the design Adhere this panel to a top fold white card base from Simon Says Stamp and our beautiful lamp card is finished. Just look at that beautiful shine. Next, we are going to combine the splatter background with the border. So this is that Merry Mint splatter background with the awesome forest greenery border. And in addition, you can kind of see there, this is going to be more of a playful design using the reindeer parts. I love this reindeer parts and I wanted it to appear that he's peeking out from behind this border. Laying everything in place, I'm going to use the new Holiday Greens Sentiment Set from Simon Says Stamp. And I'm going to lay out my sentiments and stamp them with some archival black ink. This is the Black Soot Distress Archival Ink right on the background of my card. And I'm going to spell out Happy Holidays to you and yours. I had to look. I couldn't remember. <laughs> Once I have my sentiment right where I want it to go, then I can go ahead and put everything in place and build a cute little scene. Now this does have quite a bit of mica stain on it too, but I did offset the mica stain splatter with the mica stain border with solid cardstock die cut pieces. To create the hooves for my reindeer, I actually die cut the nose from a dark brown cardstock and I cut it in half so that I could tuck it into the greenery to make it look like he's peeking up over the greenery. And I did decide not to use his mouth. So I went ahead and placed my border along the bottom edge and then I'm gonna glue the nose in place. The other thing I chose not to die cut was the eyes and we're instead going to use some onyx black pearls from Pretty Pink Posh to replace the eyes. Anytime I can find a good excuse to use a cute little dimensional embellishment, I will. I'm going to tip his head at an angle. We're going to pop the antlers in place. I also think if you wanted to cut some additional like little greenery like holly and berries if you have a tiny die for the... Um, to put up at the antlers or if you want to make it a little girl reindeer and add a little bow I think that would be super cute as well. I can totally see using these dies for all kinds of amazing amazing projects because I love the reindeer. I'm going to pop those little black eyes in place and the reason I thought we didn't need the mouth is because the face is pretty well hidden back behind the greenery and I opted to not use it. Then I'm going to simply tuck the hooves kind of at an angle right underneath the greenery, just like so. And then we're going to add little red pearls to the berries there right along the right side of the card. And because we go ahead and add some berries over here, I do want to offset that with something red on the left side of the card. We're also going to add a highlight to the nose with a white jelly roll pen, add detail to the hooves, and maybe even some little highlights. Not go over the top, but just a little bit here on the ears, I think rounds it out nicely. A little dab of glue on those berries, and then the little the little red pearls just are the perfect little accent. Next up, we have our all over background. This was the Winter Frost, Iron Gate, and Merry Mint. 
I die cut that brand new snowflake frame from white glitter cardstock and glued it over the top of that background. I've also die cut the Merry Word from white glitter cardstock and two layers of white cardstock and layered them one on top of another. Then all of those awesome little greenery pieces that we colored when we colored the border from the last card are going to be tucked around the word Merry to add a beautiful pop of color. You could also keep this more of a one color type of card and have it very frosty and maybe make it more of a winter design instead of holiday if you'd like by simply switching up the sentiment and taking out the Christmas greenery. I like this little pop of color against the blue. This is another very mica stain heavy design. And you can see I'm just building that color in there and I might have to tack down the letter M. I did not get it. I kind of lifted it up to tuck things underneath and it's going to need another little dose of glue. For the rest of the sentiment, I did stamp a little phrase from the Tiny Words Christmas stamp set from Simon Says Stamp. I embossed it with silver embossing powder and we will pop it up with some foam adhesive right underneath the word Mary. I of course layered on the red berries there. And then we will finish with a few clear heart embellishments to kind of add to the frosty fun feel. Once the glue dries, they will be completely see-through so they're very subtle and it really lets the beautiful background snowflakes and of course mica stained greenery shine. Our last idea is our stenciled background. And for this one, we are going to go ahead and place this in our Misty with the hand lettered holiday background. This is from last year's release. I'm going to ink this up with some Tide Pool Simon Says Stamp Positively Saturated Ink to stamp text right over the background. I picked this color because I thought it matched the Merry Mint perfectly. This one, we're going to then take a blending brush and a little bit more of the Tide Pool color and ink around the edges to give it a bit of a moodier look and kind of get rid of some of that harsh white color. For this one, I love how the Mica Stain takes a little bit, I hate to say a, a back seat, but it's a little bit more subtle. I've die cut the Peace on Earth die from Simon Says Stamp twice from white cardstock, once from white glitter, layered them together and placed them on top, and the rest of the phrase is from the Tiny Words Christmas. We're gonna finish with a scattering of green pearls all over the background. Just to kind of round out our design. Once I have these in place, I'm going to do a quick look back at all four cards using the five techniques that I've shared with you today during the five ways and five days series showcasing mica stains for holiday cards. So here is the stenciling with mica stains, the all over background and also coloring die cuts with mica stains, the splatter background and coloring a die cut border and coloring or painting on the color on a die cut. The supplies I use to create my cards are listed and linked below the video here on YouTube for your convenience. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Hi there, I'm Heidi, Simon's mama and founder at simonsaysstamp.com. Thank you so much for watching our video. If you like what you just saw, be sure to press the thumbs up and subscribe to see more great content.